Alrighty then, today we are going to be making scalloped potatoes, but not your uh, typical scalloped potatoes. For this recipe, you're going to need some potatoes. I use the small potatoes, the B size, really easy for chopping and cutting. You're going to need some apples and onions, some mushrooms, some zucchini. Um, what am I forgetting here? Uh, you're going to need either like um, clam chowder or cream of mushroom or something like that to put on top. I've got some water since this is condensed. So let's go ahead and uh, get started. First thing we're going to do is chop some onions. Oh, this is a Vidalia chopper. Very handy, lets me uh, slice and dice very efficiently and effectively. All right, so first we're going to get our first potato out. Let's go ahead and take this lid off and put it over here. Beautiful, okay. And this is a four quart uh, baking dish, so it's really, really uh, nice. So first we're going to do the potatoes. Okay. We'll get about two to three, maybe some more. And as you can see, these potatoes are really, really small, so no pre-chopping required. All right, so we take this off. Yeah. I'm going to put this over here. We'll take this out. As you can see, it's got really fine mesh or grill, so you can really chop finely. And then we've got beautiful potatoes. I'm going to put that over here. I want to go ahead and get all of its goodness. All right, fantastic. So let's go ahead and spread that about. Uh, we may need some more potatoes. I have been using a two quart uh, baking dish, so I may have underestimated how much we're going to need. But it's okay. No big deal, as they say. So I'm just going to do put three more in here. Obviously, not where we want the potato to go. We want it to be flat, but it does not seem to be wanting to go anywhere here. Okay. We want to have a nice base for the potatoes. Beautiful. Okay. Wonderful, wonderful. Let's go ahead and put these bad boys in here. Okay, we want to get everything out. Beautiful, beautiful. Alright, so let's go ahead and spread this about. Beautiful. Now, where here comes the secret ingredient that you would have never thought to put in your scalloped potatoes, but that would be a green apple. It's, it's a Granny Smith, it's very sour, but when you bake it, it really comes out nice and uh, sweet. All right, so we're gonna cut that like so. And yes, um, the Vidalia will chop through this no problem. You do need to put some uh, pressure on this though, because, but as you can see, it chops through very, very nicely. Now I'm going to cut the other one. I don't know if I'll be able to use the other apple or not, but I just brought it out just in case. I do refrigerate my green apples. Put this over here. You do sometimes have to put quite quite a bit of force on this. All right, and as you can see, we have beautifully chopped green apples. So we're going to put that here. Okay, we still want. Get all of the goodness here. Oh, 
Alrighty then. So let's go ahead and spread it about. Beautiful, beautiful. Uh, the next item, oh, looks like there's some apples that fell through. Don't want to waste. Now, you don't, it doesn't really matter what order you put these ingredients in. But the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put in an onion. This is a white onion. I don't know if I'll need more. We still got green apples. <laughs> they are just everywhere. My goodness. All righty then. So, the next part is to cut the onion. Not cut, I had hoped, but a cut nevertheless. All right, and we're gonna set this here. Set this here. All right, we're gonna place this over here. And what we want to do is get rid of the skin, which it just did beautifully for us. But there's still some more skin on here. Alright. Come on. Peel off. There we go. And I think we still have some skin over here. Let's see if this knife can help me. Get it out. There we go. Light and doubt, use your knife. All right. All right, here comes onion number two. And again, it has done a beautiful job of peeling that onion for us. Okay. Wow, this thing is really, really stuck. You have to be careful not to press in too deeply or you could cut yourself because these blades are very sharp. I'm just pushing it in to assist. Okay, this thing does not really want to go through. Oh, here we go. Oh, that's probably why. You wouldn't think such a little piece of skin would pose such trouble. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and take that off. And as you can see, we've got beautifully diced onions. All righty then. Let's go ahead and get these out. And there comes Tiger. Tiger, what are you doing? What? What? Come here. Come here. Let's go ahead and mix these about. Come on, Tiger. Get out of the camera's view. Come on. Don't be a crazy cat now. Oh, you're so cute, Tiger. Okay. Next, what we're going to do. Okay, looks like we've got some vegetables are growing here. So let me go ahead and dig them out so we don't get a build up. There we go. Alright, next what we're going to do is we're going to do zucchini. You can use squash, eggplant. These aren't really big zucchini. But what we want to do though with these zucchini is obviously we want to cut this off. And then we're going to cut this in half. And then we're going to quarter this. And we're going to place it like so, diagonally. It should fit. Beautiful. Alrighty then. Let's go ahead and do the same thing for this. The onions are really starting to kick up, so we do need to get this covered in. Alright, this may be a little bit too big. So let's go ahead and cut these in half. But this is a really, really easy recipe, really healthy. You can probably do this faster, not uh, using your hands, but for me, I have to do everything individually. All right. All right, but the zucchini went through like molasses. Okay, 
And as you can see, we've got beautifully peeled zucchini. So let's go ahead and get the rest of the zucchini here. All right, the next rest ingredient we're going to put in is mushrooms. You can never go wrong with mushrooms. They're absolutely delicious. And they really add a, like a meaty heart because there is, um, well, I guess for the, say for the clam chowder, there's really no meat in this recipe. Let's go ahead and get out the mushrooms. To open this up. Now these are already peeled, but I'm going to peel or, uh, slice, but I'm going to slice these even further. I want to keep everything as uniform as possible. I'm not sure if I'll use the whole thing. Again, this is my first time cooking with the four quart casserole baking dish. I'm really, really excited. Okay. So let's go ahead and add some more mushrooms. But you can um, run whole mushrooms through this. And this really does save a lot of time can you imagine you have to like dice everything individually? Too time consuming. I think that's one reason a lot of people don't like to cook. Because so much preparation has to go into a dish. And of course nobody likes to slice and cut. I don't really like slicing and cutting. But it's a natural fact of life. Thank you. You're back for more. What's wrong, Tiger? What? You're always such a troublemaker. Don't know what my cat wants. He's probably jealous I'm not making it for him. But he'll be eating like a king soon enough. Let me push this part. Alright, let's go ahead and add some more. Tiger, move! Move, come on, move. Stop getting in the way of my camera. I love you. But you're getting on my nerves. All right. And again, it doesn't have to be said, but mushrooms are very healthy for you. Oh, I think this is enough for now. Oh wow, looks like we missed a couple here. But oh wow. And as you can see, beautiful sliced mushrooms. We probably could use some more. This dish is really big. I'm not going to lie about that. All right, next what we're going to do is we're going to add another apple. Oh, look. We're getting a load of vegetables stuck in the mix here. Let's go ahead and get it out. Never a good thing to feel about. Oh, my Looks like I will be using my um, second apple. That's fantastic. I guess you could use more green apples for um, more like apple pie tartness if you wanted to, but I think two apples is more than enough. Let's go ahead and cut this. Okay. But the apple though is really the, um, the star of this dish. Definitely smelling the mushrooms. They are smelling delicious. Okay, so we're going to spread these about. Let's go ahead and do another zucchini. We could do another. Uh, Onion. I think I'm going to do another onion. Yes. I think I shall. But what I'll do this time is 
We're gonna mix it with the zucchini so it's not so eye-watering. All right, let's get this bad boy out. Beautiful. Try to get as much skin off as possible. Let me get out my other zucchini, so what we can do is in quick succession. Okay. All right, so we're going to cut this in half. We'll cut this in half just to... Oh, we can just stand it up like this, but... The way you cut them, you know, really regulates the length of your dice slice, slices, if you will. Now for the onion. Don't think this knife likes me very much. <laughs> but you know what they say, where there's a will, there is most definitely a way. So the first piece we're going to do is the onion. See if it'll get the skin off for us. Looks like it will do that, and then some. Holy moly! We don't want to lift this whole thing out. All we want to do though is just get rid of this skin. Okay, so we got that part out. Now we just need to get this part out. Okay. There we go. Is the dish back in line? It sure is. Go ahead and go for the zucchini. Let's go for the other onion. And this Vidalia chopper can hold, I believe, six cups of goodness and veggies. All right, so here comes one skin, here comes two skin. Always, is always a strand that never goes through. Let's go ahead and add this to this. And yes, this is starting to fill up. But again, this thing can hold a lot. And then I'll just do it like this. Beautiful. So as you can see, it's not taking too much time. And look this beautiful medley of onions and zucchini. Oh boy, okay, here we go, here we go. We're starting to fill this bad boy up. And we still need to add some more potatoes, but I think we can fit them. Now I have the oven set to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. And this will probably take about an hour, maybe a little bit more. Again, this is all new to me, cooking such a huge, beautiful dish. All right, so let's go ahead and add the potatoes before I start crying a river. Where are my potatoes? Gorgeous, gorgeous. Be able to go through the whole bag. Maybe not. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and just use one more potato. I probably could have used more mushrooms, but I guess I'm going to need a bigger dish. Four quarts is not enough. <laughs> all right, so let's go ahead and get that out. Get all that goodness out of here. You know what? I think I am going to top this with a layer of mushrooms. Yes, I 
think so either. No reason not to. Now you don't have to cover this dish at all, so that's probably what will enable me to get some more of the beautiful mushroom goodness in. I probably should have bought the whole mushrooms, but I think these were on sale, and that's why I got them. Yeah, they had a two for uh, one dollar, but the ones that were whole cost more. You'd think it'd be the other way around, because somebody had to slice these, or maybe they just were done in the machine. I don't know, but either way, we find ourselves here. But I use this Vidalia chopper for practically everything so when it comes to slicing and dicing. It's pretty powerful, as you can see. If they had an electronic version, oh, I'd be so, so happy. But you know what they say, leg power isn't always bad. my here we go all right we definitely need to get this out you will not be wasting good mushrooms okay and again that probably should add more mushrooms but I'm not going to okay now Here's where you can add the, um, the mushroom, the cream of mushroom, or gravy, or really cream of anything. I'm adding some, I believe this is clam chowder, and then I'm also going to be adding some water with that. So you're going to need um, a can opener. I have one that's electronic. Really love my can opener. Here's how this bad boy goes. That smells really good. I can smell it from the can already. Oh my goodness. This is going to be amazing. There we go. We're going to place that here. Oh my goodness. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Delish. And then while this is baking, this will actually soak through, believe it or not. Okay. I'm supposed to get there we go. <laughs> well, that was a rather log blog, so no worries, I'll just use my spoon. I don't know if I should use another can or not. This is gonna be interesting how this is all going to seep through. We wanna add this. Now, the last time I made this recipe, I used uh, chicken gravy, which came out really well. And as you can see, I'm not pouring any salt um, on any of this. I like to taste my food as is. Is there anything else we can get out of this can? Oh yeah, goodness juices. Mmm. Mm. Simply fantastic. And then I'm just going to pour the water over here. And this is two cups of water. And 
this basically creates like a gravy effect, if you will. Alrighty then. Now, the good part, we have to put this in the oven. Yay! Oh, I'm so excited. And yes, this thing is heavy. Alright, so here goes. All right, it has been about 40 minutes or so. I think it should be done by now. Oh, yes, it's definitely done. It's nice and crispy. Let me go ahead and turn this stuff off. Okay, hey then. Oh, I am so excited to try this. All right, now getting it out is going to be half the battle. Burning. I've tried wearing oven mitts, but they're not really made for feet. So I more or less have to. Oh, wow. Now that is amazing. Alright. How are we going to get this thing down? on me. Let's see if we maybe oh. I think it's kind of slippery. rather big this dish. Right, let's see if we can get it from the bottom. There we go. Okay. This is the finished product that you get. It looks absolutely gorgeous. Let me see if I can ah, see if I can lift it up. Maybe I would burn myself slightly here. Let me see here. As you can see, here it is. I'm not sure if you can really see that. All right, let me see if I maybe if I turn it around. Mm -hmm. There we go. Beautiful. All right, so now the time has come to serve. Nice 
and soft and definitely want to get that clam chowder on top. I'm thinking that I probably should have used two cans instead of the water where we were just layered half and half. But that's the wonderful thing about cooking. You can always experiment. You can always try new things. You know, cooking is not set in stone. And I've gone through quite a few variations of this recipe. I got this from Susan Fletcher, who made it as a vegan since one of our friends doesn't want vegan or doesn't want dairy products in his diet. And I didn't have a whole lot of hope going into it when I tasted it, but it really surprised me. It really was delicious. I was pleasantly surprised. Yeah, see there's some like, water like left over. Probably could have made it a little bit thicker, but But here you have it. So that's how you make uh, vegan scalloped potatoes.